Tereta, tereta, tereta. Stop, stop, stop. Ok, ok. Hop, 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 hop. No le muevas. Ah, las paragus. Hey guys, what's up? It's Stephanie, and welcome back to my channel. So I have another video for you guys this week, and I just want to talk about my didactic year. So I just finished my didactic year. It is August, and it's crazy that's been a year since I started my didactic year. So I just wanted to discuss that for those of you who are interested in applying to PA school, for those of you who are interested just how a didactic year is in PA school, and for those of you who just got up into PA school and are about to start your didactic year. So I just wanted to discuss that. I wanted to discuss basically the pros and the cons. Um, what were the things I struggled with? What are some of the memorable things I have of didactic year? And then the question that everybody has, whether is didactic year harder than clinical year? So I will be discussing that in this video. So I just finished my didactic year and it's crazy because the year has gone by so fast. I feel like just yesterday I got my white coat and it's just gone by so fast. And as they say, when you're in didactic year, everything's just really, really fast paced. So I started in August and I went through school almost the entire year, even through summer, and just finished. Um, now in regards to breaks, so I started in August, I had my white coat ceremony and then I had a week off, which is the week I'm off right now because next week I start clinical. And then after that, I went to school straight from August to December. Of course, you have your holiday breaks in between, like you have your, your Columbus Day and then you have Thanksgiving week, weekend break off also. And then you have your Christmas break off, which is four weeks. And then in January, we come back to school and we go to school straight until May. We have that week off during March, which is a spring break week. So. We go to school, we have also the holidays, of course, in between like President's Day, etc. And then in May, we finish our spring semester. We have three weeks off. And then in June, we go back to school for our summer school. And we go straight almost every day. We only have July 4th, only one day for July 4th off. So this time, our July 4th was on a Thursday. So we had Wednesday class, Thursday we had off, and then Friday we had exams. So. We didn't have an entire weekend off. It was literally just July 4th off, and then the next day was back to class. And then we went straight until August, and now we have a week off, and I go back and I start my my clinical year. So yeah, that's how P uh, your didactic year is. It is basically straight, 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 straight. It's a lot, a lot of information. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, specifically the one that I completed talking about my first semester of my didactic year, I have to say that I really, really struggled a lot my didactic year. Um, specifically my first semester. My first semester I graduated with a 3.0, yes a 3.0, I got all B's in all my classes. I took 17 hours that first semester and I struggled a lot. One of my classes I was actually struggling between a B and a C, so I was really close to getting a C. Thankfully, I got a B because I studied a lot for the final, so I was able to go from a low low B to a little bit higher than B um, and not getting a C, thankfully. Had some of my classmates that I studied with, that I struggled with me, um, some of them did get Cs during the first semester, and it did bring down their GPA. So in graduate school, you have to have higher than a 3.0 to get financial aid. Now, if you have lower than a 3.0, then you are placed on probation for your next semester. So the following semester, you have to make sure that you bring that um, less than 3.0 GPA and bring it to a 3.0, or you can lose your financial aid. And that was the case for one of my classmates. Uh, she was placed on probation, but thankfully she actually was able to bring her GPA up to higher than a 3.0 and she was taken off of probation. So that was my experience first semester. Now, why was the reason that I struggled a lot my first semester? I would say is that I just, I didn't know how to study guys. I really didn't. I had been out of school two years. I graduated in 2016 and I had not been in school. So I felt like I was out of my rhythm of studying and 
going back to school was really hard for me, specifically in such an intensive program like PA school, where you're learning all this information in such a short period of time. It's really difficult for some individuals like myself, specifically if you've been out of school for a long time. And this was the case for one of my classmates. Um, she had several master's degrees and she had been out of school for almost five years. So she had to go back and get into that rhythm of studying. And not only getting back into that rhythm of studying, but also getting back into the rhythm or just being able to study appropriately and in a way that you're grasping and maintaining that information because I found that I was studying all the time and I really was. I was studying from eight to midnight every day. I was studying weekends. I mean, I was studying all the time during my first semester, but I was not studying efficiently and I wasn't grasping the information efficiently. I was trying to learn everything versus when you're in PA school, you're just trying to learn what they teach you because I feel like PA school is kind of you learn, you know, what you need to know, not as in depth as in medical school. So I felt like I was trying to learn everything and I think that was just confusing me a lot. And on top of that, I wasn't retaining the information. So I felt like I was just learning and dumping, learning and dumping. And that was not helping me out at all. So one of the things that I really learned in PA school, specifically my first semester is repetition. So repetition is the key guys and I can't stress this enough is that repetition, repetition, repetition is extremely important. So whether it is in flashcards, doing the flashcards every day, or whether it is in reading the information that you already went through every day, it's really important because in PA school you're going over modules so quickly and when the exams come around, say for example you're in the GI module. So my example was a GI module. Our GI module was four weeks. And one day we went over all the diseases of the gallbladder and the pancreas, just in one day. So say day one, we went over the pancreas and gallbladder issues. By day 30, if I had not already repeated that information that I learned day one, then by day 30, you already forgot it. And you're scrambling to try to cram all this information in for the exam the next day. Versus if from day one, you are repeating this gallbladder and pancreas diseases and disorders and how to treat them. If you're repeating this information every day, that by the day the exam comes around, you already know the information and you're not struggling to cram all this information in. And that's what I was doing my first semester. I was not repeating the information. So that was another thing that I learned. Also, time management is really, really important in PA school. You wanna make sure that you place appropriate time to every class and not only spend a lot of time in one class because I found myself that I was struggling in this class so I put all my time on this class and then since I was putting all my time in this class I left this class to the side and then I found myself doing well on the exams for this class because I was spending too much time here. So that's why you have to make sure that you make appropriate time for each class and not the developer take too much time studying for only one class so this is really really important is time management guys also burnout you want to avoid burnout I found myself that by the end of the semester I was just so burnt out I was studying and study but nothing it was not grasping I was not sleeping enough I had headaches all the time and it was just bad so you want to avoid burnout and make sure that you have a good balance now, that was my fall semester. It was a nightmare. I really struggled. But thankfully, my second semester during my spring semester, I had learned all this during my first semester and I made sure that I found good ways to study. So thankfully, my classmates helped me out. I asked them, hey, what works out for you? They told me flashcards. So I started doing flashcards and flashcards really, really helped me out. So my second semester, I did well very well a lot better than my first semester now when it came down to spring I'm, I'm sorry as uh, summer I actually did a lot better so I had all A's except for one class because I did I did two, I did very bad on one of the exams so that brought, my, brought me down to a B or else I would have been able to get an A but I had all A's except for one B so that was really good in comparison to my first semester where I had a 3.0 and I had B's in 17 hours so 17 hours of B's 
and I learned my lesson. So yeah, that was just basically how my didactic year went. Very, very fast paced. You're learning a lot of information. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the appropriate sleep. Sleep made wonders for me because I would sleep, I made sure that before the exams, I would go to sleep at 9 p.m. or even 10 p.m., the latest, that was the latest. And then I would take my exam the next day and you would just be surprised by how much information you, you're able, able to bring out of your brain if you're sleeping versus if you're not sleeping, you're just exhausted and you find yourself not able to think straight. And I found myself during exams where I didn't sleep that I couldn't even remember what the question was asking because after the exams, my classmates would ask me, hey, do you remember what the answer was for this question? And I'd be like, I don't even remember that question on the exam. So that was because I was just so sleep deprived. I wasn't paying attention to the questions and I was answering them incorrectly. So that was another thing, guys. You guys have to make sure you sleep enough. So sleep is a really, really important thing during your didactic year. So sleep, sleep, sleep. So these are some of just the cons. Now the pros is that I've learned so much in a year. It's, it's been a year and I've learned so much information. You learn so much and you've seen how far you've come along in regards to when you started PA school to now. So it's just, you learned so much information and it's, it's amazing. It, it really is. And also being <clears throat> those memories that I also developed with some of my classmates, you grow really, really close to them because you're all trying to get to that finish line, which is to graduate, to pass didactic year. And you guys push each other to finish didactic year. So some of those were some of the pros for my didactic year. I got to do a lot of volunteering also, which was amazing. I got to volunteer in diabetes camps with uh, diabetic kids. I got to do physicals on children, um, adolescents, middle schoolers, etc. We went to clinics and we were able to do physicals on them. So we were able to practice our exams on them, which was a great experience. We were able to participate during the PA week, informing students about what physician assistants do, um, how we are important in their health, etc. So that was a really, really good experience. So I had a lot of good experiences and I was able to also keep up with my YouTube channel. So being able to upload videos weekly, I know sometimes I didn't do it weekly because just school was really, really crazy, guys. And I'm really, really sorry about that. Um, but overall, it was a good year. I learned a lot of information, like I said, and I struggled, but I was able to learn from that. And it's funny because sometimes when I talk about my didactic year <clears throat> and I talk about my didactic year with my classmate or my classmate, if she was here with me, I'm an apostle right now with my husband, so that's why she's not here with me or else I would have her come and talk about didactic year. We both cry because we, we saw how much we grew as a person from the beginning of the semester to now. How much we struggled to get past didactic year. So I'm not trying to scare you guys, but when they say that didactic year is difficult, it really is. It really is very, very hard. Um, and I struggled and I'm just really thankful that I was able to pass and now I'm going on to clinicals. So thankfully I was able to do that. And I couldn't have done that with my fellow classmates where whether they were making charts for us for our pharmacology, um, my fellow classmates that I couldn't understand certain topics and they were able to explain it to me. Uh, some of the programs I purchased were, which were amazing like Osmosis, Smarty Pants, which I've already made reviews about. So and YouTube, of course, because YouTube is amazing. YouTube has a lot of free services, free channels that are educational, free videos that are great. And if you are in didactic year, if you're about to start didactic year, make sure that you take advantage of that. Um, amazing channels like Osmosis has free videos. Their videos are fantastic if you're a visual person. Uh, you have all these other channels. Armando Hasurigan, which is amazing for anatomy. He's a medical student. He makes free videos. He draws everything by hand. And I will watch his videos for anatomy, for my pathophysiology class, for my clinical medicine class. So you have to make sure that you also make take advantage of those classes, um, those free videos. So yeah. And then when it came down to exams, I mean, 
that was one of the things that I'm not gonna miss is that there would be day, weeks where we had six or eight exams. Like I just finished finals for PA school and I had eight exams last week for my didactic year. And it was just, it was a lot. I remember by Wednesday, I was so dead because I had already taken like six exams and I was like, oh, two more, two more. So that's one of the things I'm not gonna miss at all. That's one of the cons definitely is that you have so many exams guys, so many exams. Um, some weeks you have only two, some weeks you have eight. Um, I know there would be times where every week we had an exam or we would have four exams one week and the next week we had two. For example, Monday and then that Wednesday we had our practical for anatomy and then the next day we had our exam for anatomy lecture. And that was another thing also, anatomy cadaver lab, our lab, uh, that was a nightmare for me because anatomy in general, I struggled with anatomy. So our lab exams were going to the cadavers and being able to identify what certain arteries, nerves, etc. were. And you had to write it down. It wasn't A, B, C, or D. You had to write it down. So that was one of the things I'm not going to miss at all is anatomy for sure because I really struggled with that class. But overall, I'm going to miss my classmates because we were there every day together and now we're not since we're going to be in clinics so we're gonna be separate so that's one of the things I'm going to miss all right guys I'm sorry for talking so much this video is already at 16 minutes I'm so sorry I just got really really carried away my <clears throat> my didactic here was definitely is definitely gonna be very very memorable I learned a lot of information I struggled I cried I cried a lot there was times where I questioned myself whether I was good enough to become a physician assistant whether I was smart enough to become a PA. I asked myself, why did they accept me into the PA program? And then I remember I asked myself, why am I making these videos if I'm struggling in PA school? How am I helping people? And there was times where I wanted to stop my YouTube channel because I really thought that I wasn't gonna be able to get past my didactic year. But hey, I was able to get past my didactic year, so if you can do it, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. Um, it's just having that support and having that drive and just motivating yourself that you want to become a physician assistant. So getting that PA. Um, PA school is definitely hard, but it is definitely doable. So if you are struggling, if you're watching this video and you're struggling during your didactic year and you're thinking about quitting, don't do it guys. Um, don't do it. Um, it is really worth it once you finish your didactic year. It really is. All right guys, thanks for watching my channels and I'll talk to you guys later.